Hello everyone. In the last lecture, we talked about boosting in regression trees. Today, we'll be discussing one algorithm which works for classification trees. Okay, boosting algorithm which works for classification trees. The basic principle remains the same. You have very small uh, or very weak classifiers, very small trees or very weak classifiers at every stage. And you finally try to combine the effect of all of them to get a very strong classifier. Okay. However, we know that we can't compute residuals as such in the case of uh, classification. In regression, we computed residuals and we fitted the successive trees on the residuals from the earlier trees. In the case of classification, getting residuals is not possible because our prediction is just a class. In fact, we would be uh, seeing an algorithm which works only for two class uh, problem that is binary classification problem. We won't be going into multi-class classification problems. So we can't compute residual. Then how would we proceed? The regression setup used residuals because we said that your first model tries to explain some variation in y then whatever remains to be explained is captured by residuals so you fit the next model to that part the part which remains to be explained okay and you go on continuously doing this as a result whatever was unexplained by the earlier step now gets explained and hence Boosting gives a good result because it actually focuses on that part which needs to be explained. It doesn't go on fitting to the entire data again and again. So it avoids redundancy and focuses attention to the part which needs attention. So in classification, how can that be achieved? We can't have residuals, but what we can do is we can see that when I fit one particular classifier, which observations are misclassified. The observations which are misclassified are not actually completely explained by the classifier. Hence, they are misclassified. So, I should force my next tree to focus more on misclassified observation. So, it's kind of like unexplained part of the classification uh, problem. And if I go on doing this successively, that is, at every stage, I would see what are the observations which were misclassified by the previous step and I would expect my next classifier to focus more on them then hopefully at the end we will have a good tree okay and of course just like in the regression we would combine outputs from all of them uh, all the earlier trees okay so this is a basic step so how do we force a classifier to focus only on certain observations so what we can do is assign weights okay if i assign weights to observations in it means i am saying that okay say observation one is say more important than observation three then my classifier would focus more on observation one and we just said that my weights should be such that a misclassified observation should get misclassified means misclassified by earlier classifier should get more weight so that is exactly what the boosting would do so you will start with some initial original data okay so in the original data you fit the first classifier you call it say g1x okay g1x is a classifier then you get a weighted sample this, these weights are dependent on misclassifications in the earlier step. So that to that weighted sample you fit G2x. Then using the, uh, using the classification predictions from second classifier that is from G2 you again get a new weighted sample and you fit G3x to that and this procedure continues till some stage M you have final weighted sample M you fit a gmx to that and then you finally define your final predictor as weighted average of these individual predictors uh, okay if i am using m here let me use k here okay this is the last step is suppose k so m going from 1 to k okay so my final prediction is weighted average of earlier predictions and of course 
your intuition would tell you that these weights should be in such a way that out of these individual classifiers whoever is doing good should get more weight correct for whichever classifier the error is low the weight should be more which makes sense right in the final prediction those trees should get to contribute more who have classified more observations correctly this is basic schematic of the boosting algorithm that we are going to see its name is adaboost m1 okay there are many 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 boosting algorithms out in the world uh, there is no end to it but we are going to focus only on one, one algorithm adaboost m1 see our focus is to study some basic tools because this is a very vast field data mining is a very vast field people are and it's continuously growing field at least in the today's world it's a hot topic so people are doing research ev like every minute so you can't actually learn everything that is out in the world in a 6 month course so what we are going to do is we are going to learn some basic tools which would make our foundations so that whenever a new thing comes along we know how to think we know how to interpret that thing we know how to understand the algorithm and we can catch it up easily okay i always say that entire msc syllabus is important no doubt but more than the syllabus the way of thinking that you develop in msc is more important because the content of the syllabus is going to change as the world discovers new and new things and it can never be sufficient for your next 40 years of job because you will have to come up with new things you will have to study new things but the way of thinking that you develop here will help you study those things faster okay so we will go for adaboost m1 so let me try to write down the algorithm and then we will study that algorithm we I mean we'll try to understand each and every step in more detail okay uh, for the sake of convenience we always denote the binary classes in adaboost by minus 1 and plus 1 okay we don't call them 0 1 so we denote them by minus 1 and plus 1 so one is kind of a negative class other is kind of positive class so we said that the first step has to be of course fit to the original data so in the first step my weights have to be equal so initialize observation weights to be 1 by n where n is the total number of observations so i from 1 to n for every observation these are my weights now for m in 1 to k so k is the total number of small trees that we are going to use yeah so each of these classifiers is again going to be a stem right or at most a tree with depth 2 so that part is common in regression and classification so we first fit a classifier gmx to the training data with weights wi to the training data with weights wi so these are the things that we have to repeat okay so that's why it is for m in 1 to k so for every tree we are going to repeat these steps then we need to compute misclassification error because that misclassification error is going to decide what should be um the final weight of this classifier in the final prediction and of course using misclassified observations we are going to revise the weights of individual observations so compute error for the mth classifier as sum over i going from 1 to n wi indicator of yi not equal to gmxi upon sum over wi i going from 1 to n let us try to understand this uh, formula c normally when we say misclassification error we just focus on this part so sum over indicators and we divide by n capital n so we see out of all n observations how many are misclassified so that proportion becomes my error now we are bringing in 
the weights also okay so we are kind of computing weighted misclassification error okay so if an observation had a higher weight means if an observation was given more importance in fitting the tree and still if it gets misclassified then the tree is actually bad right because even when you focused on a particular observation you couldn't give a good fit to that observation so that means you are bad so the misclassification error should be considered higher in such cases am i making sense okay so that's why this error is actually a weighted error and now using this error we compute alpha m as log of 1 minus error m upon div upon error m so error is misclassification error that we computed here and alpha is some function of it now first thing we discussed when we discussed the roc curve we said that even the worst classifier that is the random classifier would have 50% accuracy okay so when i say i have some weak classifier it is supposed to be better than 50% so its accuracy is supposed to be more than 50% if accuracy is more than 50% error is supposed to be less than 50% okay so if error is less than 50% one minus error would be less than 0.5 and uh, sorry would be um, greater than 0.5 and error would be less than 0.5 okay error is less than 0.5 so 1 minus error would be greater than 0.5 so this fraction entire fraction would be greater than 1 and as a result log of that would be greater than 0 so alpha m is positive okay alpha m is positive for a classifier which is decent and here of course we are going to have even though weak, we are going to have decent classifiers. We can't, we won't have a classifier which has accuracy worse than the random predictor. In that case, we would go for the random predictor which has at least 0.5 chances. Okay. So, alpha m is positive. And what is the role of alpha m? We saw that here in the final prediction, alpha m is the weight given to the predictions coming from mth classifier. Right. Now, see what happens when error is high or low. So, let me consider two classifiers or maybe let us finish the algorithm first and then we will discuss this step. So, the next step of the algorithm says you have to revise the weights. So, set weights to be original weights into e raised to alpha m indicator of yi not equal to gmxi this again happens for every i okay so these four steps you have to repeat so you compute alpha m's you store them somewhere alpha m is a weight for mth classifier you do this for every tree and then at every tree you revise weights of all the n observations okay using alpha m and using the prediction from that we'll discuss this don't worry and now the final step that is the complete uh, final classification so output gx that is the final prediction is sine of sum over m going from 1 to k like sum over all trees alpha m gmx okay so it's a weighted average of all the earlier predictions okay now let me try to discuss in between steps so you start with common weight that is fine no doubt about that right you fit a classifier to the training data that is also fine now in the error we said we compute weighted errors why we discussed because if you had higher weight initially to that observation and still if you couldn't predict it well then it's bad okay so you should suffer more for that so your error should be computed more for that that's why it's a weighted error we also saw that alpha m has to be positive okay because you are having a weak classifier you are not having a bad classifier a classifier which is worse than the random classification and now if i have two classifiers so let's say error of first classifier is less than error of second classifier then 
minus e1 would be greater than minus e2. 1 minus e1 would be greater than 1 minus e2. Okay. And even when we divide, so e1 is smaller. So when I divide by e1 and when I divide here by e2, this is still going to be smaller. This is going to be larger. So alpha m is large if the classifier has low error. Are you getting it? So e1 is less than e2, then error for, um, sorry, the alpha for e1, alpha corresponding to that classifier is higher. So in the final prediction, classifier which has overall good accuracy gets more importance. Okay, here. That makes sense. And now about revising the weights. First thing to be noticed, we are revising weights only for those observations which are misclassified. Right. If indicator yi not equal to gmxi 0 means if an observation is not misclassified then I am getting e raised to 0 that is 1. So my weight remains wi. It doesn't get changed. Okay. So weight remains constant. And we also saw alpha is positive. So if indicator is 1 then I am multiplying the original weight by e raised to alpha. Of course since alpha is positive e raised to alpha is greater than 1. So I am increasing the weights if an observation is misclassified. I am keeping the weight same if the observation is not misclassified. Okay. So I am telling the next classifier to focus more on the misclassified observation. And I am telling it to focus less on the observations which were correctly classified earlier. Is it okay? And in the final output, each of these GMX is going to be either plus 1 or minus 1. Correct. Because each of them is predicting a class. And we are taking final output as sign of this sum. So I know that I give more weights to those which were classifying correctly. So supposedly if many classifiers have predicted plus 1 and if they have more weights then the final prediction would be positive. So positive means you again predict the class plus 1. Similarly if more classifiers have predicted minus 1 class. Alphas are anyway positive. So the weighted mean would also be minus 1 and you predict negative class. Is it okay? So this is Adaboost M1 which is an algorithm for classification trees with binary classes. Okay. And as I said, just like regression boosting, it learns slow but it does a very good job. Boosting improves predictions and classifications, uh, I mean, by a significant margin over many other classifiers. Even though individual classifiers are just terms or very small trees and hence they are very weak. Okay. So try to go through this, through this algorithm. It is slightly um, involved, not much involved. It's slightly involved, but try to understand each and every step. And I'm sure you would be able to process it quite well. Okay. I'll stop here. Thank you.